Hello, everyone. Welcome to Titan Alumni Talks, a weekly podcast where we talk to alumni about their experiences at Cal State Fullerton. For this week's episode, we have Travis Lindsay, who graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a double bachelor's in economics and finance. He also got his master's in business admin in entrepreneurship. He is currently an adjunct professor at Cal State Fullerton, and he is the founder of Titan Angels. Stay tuned to listen to his awesome advice about entrepreneurship and risk taking. Check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash CSUF alumni to listen to all previous episodes. So a lot of this entrepreneurship that you do, it's more of you having to step out of your comfort zone and just find different opportunities wherever they could present themselves rather than it sort of being handed to you. Maybe in like most careers where someone can come to you and ask you for work or like ask for you to be an intern for them or ask for you to be an employee entrepreneurship you need to put a lot of work out there yeah and so uh, one of the things you have to really get comfortable with is ambiguity uh, so you're, you're never going to know the exact answer to anything ever in entrepreneurship I mean think of it this way you're starting a business you don't know how many units you're going to sell of your, of your of the product that you're making or the service that you're uh, or, uh, uh, developing for people and so you just have to you know do research uh, talk with customers, try, try to figure that stuff out. But eventually you just have to uh, pull the trigger and just go with it. Uh, so you have to take like a little leap of faith and just try it out. And so, yeah, it's, you really have to change your mindset. You, you can't think of it in terms of, of comfort or, you know, getting out of your comfort zone or anything like that. You just got to think of it in terms of uh, just a, a continuous focus on building new things. And so that's, that's something that, you know, I, I've struggled with over, over the years. I'm sure I, I know other entrepreneurs have, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely at, at a certain level, it's definitely a mindset. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're not, you're not relying on anybody else to dictate what you're going to do on a day-to-day basis. You've got to figure it out for yourself and build it out and it is stressful because you have you have other people that are relying on you for you know more or less their livelihoods uh so you you gotta you gotta stick to it you've gotta build a business you gotta keep up with payroll and not all i i haven't you know had to build or keep a payroll or anything like that i've been you know a solopreneur uh throughout my professional career so far Uh, But, you know, at our investment fund, um, we are responsible for investing hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so that's, that's a pretty big responsibility. And uh, you feel that every day. And if you ever, you know, want to take some time off or, you know, just not work as hard as, as, or or work, you know, less hard because you want to watch Gilmore Girls or something like that. you don't because you have that responsibility to, you know, produce for people. So you just keep on working and you keep on building and that's what your focus is. Uh, you know, uh, my mindset is at a base level, kind of more looking at what are the, 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 the downside risk of things, the, the negative possibilities. And that's, you know, that, that that's probably a good mindset to have when you're investing, uh, because you know, when you're an investor, one of the things that you want to do, one of the prime uh, objectives, is to not lose money. But as an entrepreneur, your mindset really needs to be more of that that growth mindset. You have to be a little bit more optimistic. You have to, you know, think that things are going to work, and you're going to have to take risks because, again, you have to be comfortable with that ambiguity, and you have to work on building things. Uh, so, I mean, e- even like with. Uh, 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 what you're doing with this. I mean, this is a, a leap of faith. You don't know how people are going to respond to it. Uh, you don't know if anybody's going to watch it or not, uh, but you, you do it anyway. So you spend uh, a, f- a few hours of, of your time you're, and it's valuable time. I, I tell this to my students all the time. Uh, uh, every minute you spend is, is valuable. So one of the, so the you best look, arguments you know, I've from ever that perspective uh, and focus on doing heard about it was uh, from higher from ROI. Nicholas uh, Tassim Taleb, uh, he's the guy uh, so who wrote Black on Swan, on doing those um, things that are actually gonna Anti-Fragile, a number of other books, and he is a uh, world-renowned investor, uh, 
academic thinker, uh, whatever the heck you want to call him. But uh, the way that he the way that he frames it is that you want to take risks that have very little downside and a huge upside. So for entrepreneurs, I mean, starting a blog, what's the downside to that? Okay, I I, I might lose a few hours of my time, uh, maybe you know a, a few hours a week, uh, whatever the case may be. But the upside to that is that hey, guess what? I mean, I, I could get a, a free trip to the Dominican Republic, or I could build out a business that uh, will make me hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It didn't happen, but uh, it could have. Uh, another example would be uh, coders, computer programmers. Uh, you build out code, you build out a program. Uh, sure, it's some of your time, but the upside of that is that you could actually build a business that uh, could get funding uh, and could you know go IPO and you can make tens of millions of dollars. And so you want to take risks that have a, a huge upside, but a, a limited downside. Um, and that is, I think, the best mindset that an entrepreneur can have uh, when thinking in terms of risk and, and risk management or risk mitigation. Uh, so yeah, you want to take those risks that have a higher upside and a manageable downside. Now, as you build your business, of course, you have to take bigger and bigger risks, and the and you, the that calculus of uh, the upside versus the downside might become more difficult over time. Especially, you know, like if you're if you're like a Google or you're uh, some other company, and it, so let's say that you have built out a business and that you're making a, a few million dollars a year and now you start to hire out more and more employees. You've got maybe 20 employees. Do you, do you hire another 30 employees so that you can build your business and get from that, you know, four or $5 million plateau and, you know, try to build it out to $50 million or do you hold back a little bit uh, throughout most of you know, history, it's, it's been a, it's been a pretty good bet. You know, you hire on more people, you build out the business, you grow it out and uh, you can get increased success, but there's, you know, there's always those events that can come, come down the pipe that can hurt your business. It could be a pandemic, a one, once in a hundred years pandemic that could, you know, totally flatten the economy. Uh, it could just be a downturn in your industry, or maybe, you know, somebody else can come a, uh, come into your uh, your industry and totally disrupt it. So the 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 calculus in terms of downside and upside risk uh, really gets a little bit more tricky as you grow your business because you have a lot more to lose. But early on, when you're just starting a business, uh, if you don't have to spend a lot of money to start that business, and that's you know frequently the case with most startups, uh, it doesn't really cost that much, especially today, to start a lot of businesses. Uh, it's it's worth the risk because again the 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 downside is that you lose some of your time and if you're a student uh, if you are even a professional maybe a mid career or late career or whatever the case may be you have time you have time to start building a business uh, there's a whole industry out there that that talks about building out side hustles and so you have everybody has hobbies and things that they like to do. Uh, build, start building a business around that and, and you know, dedicate a few hours to it a week. Uh, it's, it's probably a better use of your time than uh, you know, watching YouTube videos or binging Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Uh, so yeah, if, if, if you have an idea, if you've been thinking about doing something for a long time, just start building it out. And even if it is something that, you know, might down the road uh, require of you to buy a physical location or do something like that. There are ways to start those businesses at a much more scaled back level. I mean, just taking the cigar block for an example, I know one cigar blogger who early on, you know, built up a tremendous following and just kept building and building and building that following. Eventually he uh, uh, had his own cigar shop. Uh, it, was, it, it was thriving for a, a number of years. And then it got wiped out by uh, one of the hurricanes that hit Texas. Uh, but, you know, that didn't deter him. Uh, a couple of years later, he actually launched his own cigar brand. And that is, it's still around today. It's thriving. But the, the whole moral to this story is that 
no matter what your idea is, there are ways to start it at a scaled back level so that it is feasible for you in terms of your time, in terms of your finances uh, and your ability to. So start with what you can do and then just build it up over time. Yeah, and I mean, let's just take your blog, or not your blog, I'm sorry, uh, uh, your podcast as an example. I mean, there's a lot of people who start out doing podcasts. And uh, if they start building up a following over time, they could branch out into other activities. Uh, you could be like a Gary Vaynerchuk, and you could start doing consulting for other companies, help them figure out how to you know, effectively market what they're doing. Um, you could... Uh, be like a Joe Rogan or you know any number of comedians who now have podcasts and you could uh, start selling items uh, you know kind of like as at like endorsement deals you could start doing that stuff you could start writing books you could start doing a number of things so what you're doing is you're building a platform you're building credibility within your space and people will uh, you know eventually see it but it does it does take time uh, you could you know, circumvent all that and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, uh, pay somebody to write a book for you, uh, market it, and, you know, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. But what you're doing is more organic and you will build up those, those skills and that reputation over time so that you could do other things with it. Uh, and, you know, maybe it is as a, a job for another or for a corporation, or maybe it's, it'll be as a consultant for corporations, you know, on the PR side or marketing side or whatever the case may be in your situation. Uh, what, what, what's, what's your background? Uh, I'm a computer science major with a minor in math and physics. So it doesn't seem like it would fit in this uh, whole podcasting realm where maybe a communication major would be more applicable but I just like to branch out just to try different things and see if it works, then it works. And if it doesn't, there's always something else that I can fall back on and I'm not too, uh, let's say, hell bent on one thing. Yeah, so I mean, no, that, that, that's perfect. So you are extremely unique within your space, right? So I mean, there's a couple of, there, there's a few science uh, podcasts out there. There's a number of uh, science and math blogs out there, uh, but there's, there's not anywhere near as many as there are in the marketing space or in the general business space. So you are offering something that is completely different from uh, everybody else. Uh, so that is, that's, you're already differentiated from, uh, from your competitors and you can lean into that. Uh, so I, I don't know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, telling you what to do here or anything like that, but I mean, you could do a lot more interviews with people in the space that you're interested in. So you could, you know, reach out to professors and whatnot at Cal State Fullerton that uh, maybe are your prof professors right now. And then, you know, if you keep this going uh, six, seven months from now, you could start uh, reaching out to people at Caltech or MIT and uh, seeing what they're, if they'd be interested in doing a podcast with you. There's, there's, there's a couple of YouTube channels that I uh, have seen that uh, do that sort of thing and have been doing it for a while. It's a great way. It's a great way to network, uh, to make connections. And I don't know in your situation, maybe or maybe not, you wanna go for a master's or maybe a PhD eventually, but this is, a, this is a good way to make those connections at the very least. And then who knows, maybe you could build it up over time to be something completely different and just evolve it gradually over time. So what, what you're doing right now is you're creating more and more options for yourself, right? Uh, and you know, that's what I did with the cigar blog and just, you know, in work in general. And I think that that's, that's a good way to look at everything that you do is that the more you, you do, the more you prove yourself, the more, the more people you get to know, it just increases, uh, your, your options, uh, for what you can do in the future. Uh, so there's, there's definitely a lot that you can do. Uh, so in your own way, you know, you're, you're being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And the way you're mentioning about the cigar block and not giving up, that leads into tenacity. And I saw a video of that on the CSUF Mahalo business website about the three T's of starting a business. So could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so uh, I believe that they were, and this was, uh, I think that this was an interview that I did, what was that, probably two, three years ago. Uh, so if I, if I recall correctly, the three T's were timing, tenacity, and team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so tenacity, 
or grit uh, is something that you need. So uh, what does that mean? Uh, you're going to face obstacles no matter what you do. And you've got to keep on working at it, working at it, working at it uh, until stuff starts going your way. And especially early on when you're probably working on an idea by yourself and what makes the difference between success and failure is just the amount of you know, quality time you put into it. Uh, there will be some dark moments probably, but you just got to keep on producing content. So one of the, one of the issues I had early on was uh, there was this one advertiser that, uh, you know, wasn't paying. And so I kept on reaching out, reaching out to them and eventually, you know, got them to pay. I think uh, they, they paid once or twice and then, you know, they, they eventually just ended up ghosting me and I'm not going to name them because they're one of the uh, major cigar retailers online. But uh, in that case, I just, you know, cut ties with them and moved on. Uh, but yeah, tenacity is something that is going to get you through those times where you don't want to continue on working on what your idea is because you're tired or you've got other stuff to do, or maybe you want to go hang out with people. Uh, so you've got to really focus and have, I mean, passion is a part of it, but it's, it's more just the, the grit and the tenacity to keep on working through the issues. Um, is it something that can really be taught? Uh, I think it can. Uh, it's, it's better if it's taught earlier on. Uh, so, you know, it's just, Hey, you've got, you're a, you're in the fifth grade, you've got homework to do, and you would really like to go outside and play with your friends. Uh, but if you have parents that kind of instill that, that ethic in you, that work ethic in you, it's, it's definitely a plus. And then, uh, if you don't have that, or maybe you do to some extent, uh, uh, eventually you're responsible for yourself. And I mean, I see it in our students. They, they work extremely hard. Uh, they are doing, you know, three to five, maybe some of them are doing six classes. And if they're uh, concentrating in entrepreneurship, these are very intensive classes. Uh, there's an extreme amount of workload. So it's something that you just gotta, you just gotta do. Uh, so, you know, keep a schedule, uh, make sure that you have a network of people that will help you keep on task and you know at the heart of it you just gotta you just gotta be that kind of person that's gonna keep on working and working and working uh, until you get uh, the job done and the job done well team is team is another one uh, especially for startups there you can't know everything uh, you don't know everything and even if you did you don't have the time to do everything so sure Starting off your business, you know, you're going to be by yourself. You're going to uh, do the podcast. You're going to edit it. You're going to put it all together. You're going to publish it. You're going to market it yourself. But over time, you're going to need to start adding on people if you want it to grow. Uh, because there's only so much work that, that you alone can do. Uh, so one of the ways that I've had it put to, to me is that maybe each individual individual person or an, an individual person can produce, you know, $250,000 worth of value a year. Well, if you're, if you stay as a solo entrepreneur, that is the ceiling that you'll ever be able to reach. But once you start adding on more people, it doesn't, they kind of have an additive effect and it's not just, you know, a straight line uh, increase. I think that there are ways that you can you know, leverage uh, synergies that people create when they start working together. So in other words, if you have four people that all have a $250,000 value ceiling to the uh, individually, okay, that's 250K, but put them together and they might be able to build a business that can create $2 million worth of value a year because there is something to working together with people uh, where your ideas can kind of compound on each other and grow into something else that you uh, didn't think was possible beforehand. And it's, you, you become, more, you, you become uh, more than a sum of your parts. Uh, so that's, that's a huge thing, you know, create a team. Um, you know, your, your expertise is in the sciences, mine is in business. 
uh, if, if you wanted to create a business in the sciences, you would probably want to reach out to somebody who is good at management, who maybe is good at marketing and operations and all that other stuff uh, that business people do. Uh, so it's, it's, it's always good to have a team on hand. And if you think back to some of the, the most well-known entrepreneurs over the last three, four decades, uh, they always, there was always somebody that was at their sides. Uh, they always had a team of people, whether it was Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or, you know, Elon Musk or whoever, uh, they always had a team of people that were at least as intelligent as they were and they had skills that complemented each other. Uh, so building out a team is something that uh, you really need if you want to be a successful entrepreneur that can grow a decent sized business and something as an investor, uh, we really look at closely. So if somebody comes to us and they're that loan engineer and they've been working on an idea for six, seven years, that's, you know, that's a bit of a red flag. Uh, because it's like, okay, you've had this idea, you've been working on it for seven years, all alone. Uh, and it's like, why, why haven't you reached out? Why, why don't you have any connections? And why haven't you built out a team yet? Uh, so that is, that is troubling. And again, because you can only do so much with the resources that you have. And then you're a solo entrepreneur, that's all that you're ever going to do is just, you know, low level stuff. Uh, so team is extremely important. And then uh, timing. Timing is one of those qualities that it's kind of hard to pin down. So like, when is it a good time to launch a particular kind of a business? Uh, you know, Google, if they had tried to launch their business 10 years before they did, you know, the, 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 the internet infrastructure wasn't there for them to actually, you know, catch on. Uh, there just weren't that many people online. Uh, it probably would have been a lot more difficult to index the whole internet. Uh, maybe it would have been cost prohibitive to do something like that as well, because computer time was very expensive at that point, you know, early 90s, late 80s. Uh, and then again, you know, if they had started their business 10 years later, uh, probably would have been too late uh, because other companies were already in the, the, the search engine space. Somebody else would have figured it out. And so the whole point to that is that you have to have good timing for what you do. So what's an entrepreneur to do? Well, I mean, one thing is to learn as much as you can. Uh, so read up on the industry that you are in, uh, get to understand what the trends are, uh, and I mean, as an investor, you, you know how important trends are. Uh, so you, you want to look and see what's going on in the, in the economy, uh, in your industry specifically, uh, where are things going? Uh, so the easiest example is that uh, for many advanced economies in the world, uh, the, the populations are aging, right? So there's a lot more old people as a percentage of the overall population now than there were 40, 50 years ago. So those are some obvious, that's an obvious trend. And uh, smart business people can leverage those trends. Uh, so creating products and services that appeal to that older population would be a, a good way to potentially start a business. Um, you know, with the pandemic that we're you know, living through right now, uh, that is going to cause a lot of things to change, and it's going to accelerate a lot, of, a lot of trends that are that were already going on. Uh, is there going to be an increased move towards automation and AI? Uh, are larger companies going to, you know, opt out of hiring back a lot of people um, in favor of building out those AI uh, capabilities? Uh, so there's there's a lot that's going to happen over the next two, three, four, five years longer that uh, will be accelerated because of what's going on right now in terms of the pandemic. Uh, it's kind of like a, a forced version of creative destruction. Uh, so a lot's going on. And uh, yeah, I mean, just in general, timing is a huge, 
huge thing for businesses. And then you also oh. mentioned growth mindset. And yeah. that's the thing that I believe they are starting to teach students now. When I was a mentor for uh, middle school kids, that was one of the things that was taught in the training module where we have to instill that mindset into students just so they have that grit to begin with and they don't give up as easily as some people who are who have a fixed mindset would. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm just in my mind, I'm trying to figure out how dark to get with this. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, for example, you are in a crappy situation, you don't think that you're going to be able to accomplish anything, guess what? You're not going to, you're not going to accomplish anything. Uh, if you just, if that's what, if that's where your mindset is at. Alternatively, if you think that you are capable of doing great things, that if you can do more, uh, chances are you're probably going to accomplish more than you know you otherwise would and it's 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 not anything like uh like the secret or anything like that if if you just conceptualize it it's going to happen if you put out those those good vibes into uh into the universe good things will happen to you no it's just that if you take those risks if you think that you are going to be successful uh you're going to work as if you are going to be successful, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna do better work. Uh, you're not going to do something with the mindset of, oh, this isn't gonna work. Uh, because if you do, if, if you think that something is gonna fail before you even start it, uh, the quality of your work isn't gonna be that great. Uh, you're probably not gonna reach out to people and try to build things up. And I mean, like in your example, if you thought that, oh, this podcast, there, nobody's gonna listen to it, uh, this is just, you know, a way for me to build out my technical abilities and that's about it, or maybe my interviewing abilities, which are very, very good. Um, then you probably wouldn't have done a second season of it, right? Uh, but, you know, if you think that you're going to be successful uh, and you, you are optimistic and you, you work towards something, good things can happen. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be successful. Uh, but it, you have a much higher likelihood of, of that happening. And one of the things I've seen with, with my students and, uh, you know, just people in general, you know, with some of the entrepreneurs that we've worked with, some of the startup founders we've worked with, is that uh, one, of the, one of the weird things about humanity is that uh, almost as if the, the smarter the person is, the more... I think it's probably because the more they're able to see the, the negative, see the downsides to things, uh, they tend to be a little more risk averse. And uh, there's, a, there's good reasons to be risk averse and there's bad reasons to be risk averse. But uh, if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, if you're gonna build something that is you know, bigger than yourself, uh, you can't really be that way completely. Uh, you need to have a very sober concept of where the risks lie and uh, you have to have more of that optimistic growth mindset in order to get things done get bigger things done just keep on building uh, if you know Larry and Serge, Serge, Sergey uh, thought that they, they would only make Google so that it would be used at Stanford University uh, they probably would have done things a lot differently than if they had the mindset that this could be the way to uh, catalog the whole internet. Uh, so how you look at things, how you go about approaching, you know, different tasks, different risks has a huge impact on what you're capable of, of completing. And, you know, for me personally, I mean, I, I've had issues with that because I, I definitely see, you know, the downsides to a lot of stuff. Uh, like, you know, trying to build a business. Uh, I've seen too many people uh, plunk down tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars into a business. And I know that the, the failure rate for businesses that uh, actually get funding of some sort or another is just astronomical, uh, depending on what you look at. Uh, early stage companies, they have a 70 to 90% failure rate, depending on how you look at it. Uh, so knowing that I could either just say, Hey, I'm going to check out of this, uh, you know, just do a normal job and not, not invest in these startups because the risk is just too insane. 
Or I could look at it from the perspective, and I'll talk as an investor right now, I'll look at it from the perspective of, okay, uh, eight out of 10 of these companies are gonna fail completely, but you know, there's gonna be one or two uh, out of every 10 that do well, that make some money. And so I'm gonna focus on that and focus on finding those companies that have that tremendous upside and they look like they are uh, doing everything right in terms of building up the team, the timing is correct, uh, they're willing to work through issues, they're an industry that's growing, uh, and you know so much other stuff that you look into when you consider making an investment into a startup, and focus on the upside. And you know just to tie it back to something we were talking about earlier, when you are an investor, uh, one of the things that you do, and you, you're, you're probably like this as well as an investor, uh, you need to diversify to some extent uh, so that you do protect against that downside risk, right? Uh, sure, if you invest all of your money into one company and it just you know goes bonkers and provides you with a 10,000% return, you'll be set for, set for life. But for most people who do that sort of thing, uh, they end up losing all their money uh, because there's so few of those companies that are actually around uh, that it's just, it's not conducive for a good investing uh, strategy. So what we've done, we've invested in 15 different companies. A uh, couple of them have already failed. A uh, couple of them are kind of, you know, teetering uh, on whether they're going to survive or not. But there's a handful of them that could legitimately be those kinds of companies that have a 100x return. Uh, so, um, yeah, thinking of thinking of things, thinking of problems in terms of maximizing your upside is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that relates a lot um, in like day to day life. Say a student is trying to figure out if they should skip class or not. There's a lot of that risk of okay, what if there's a pop quiz in the class? And there's that benefit that could come out of it. I could do something else, maybe work on another homework assignment or another project or learn a new skill instead of going to that class for that day. So you'd find that benefit and cost that comes in from it. So what other advice would you give to students um, maybe after, like say seniors who are getting into the job field after the semester is over and hopefully after the pandemic is over, uh, becoming like an entrepreneur because it seems like a perfect time with, um, this is like a so-called necessary forest fire to clean the slate all over again and like allow for rebirth in the job field, in the entrepreneur market. So what, what advice would you give to those students? Right, and I think that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, they always have that kind of like a, a rebirth mentality, right? Because they're, they tend to be more optimistic. Uh, they think that they can uh, solve any problem or build any business. So having that mindset, that growth mindset, that, you know, you can restart at any time, you could build from nothing. Uh, having that confidence uh, is huge. Um, and you know, maybe I'm different from most professors in that from day one in class, I tell my students, hey, if you've got something uh, better to do than coming to this class, maybe you're, maybe you're meeting with somebody, maybe you're meeting with a lawyer to start your business, or maybe you're meeting with a uh, potential advisor that will help, you know, grow your business or you're, you're, you're going to a job interview or something like that, go do that instead of coming to the class. If you've got something that has a higher value, go to that. So what that leads into is also uh, one of the mindsets of uh, really thinking about your time in terms, or in terms of uh, it being a commodity. It has a value to it. And what you're trying to do with uh, every minute of the day is to maximize that value and uh, it could be reading. Uh, I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of learning in general. Uh, over the last few years, I've read a lot about you know, uh, stoicism, uh, strat business strategy from a number of different sources. I just finished uh, reading the autobiography of uh, General Mathis. Uh, I've read meditations. Uh, I've read on war. So I, 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 I read a lot. Uh, and uh, from my perspective, learning is never a bad thing. Uh, so try to learn as much as you can. Um, and then also uh, focus on doing, doing projects. 
Uh, start out small, like we were talking about earlier on. Uh, you never know where it's going to lead. If, if you really enjoy doing something, if you really enjoy being a writer, if you really enjoy teaching people about different math concepts, you know, do that. Start up a website. Uh, start publishing blog posts or videos about it. And that stuff can lead to other good things. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but uh, if you if you focus on providing value for people and you work at it diligently and you just keep on building up kind of that resume of success, uh, eventually it, it can and sh should lead to something that is bigger than you thought you were capable of when you first started out. Uh, you know, besides that, uh, it's never a bad idea to, to just get a normal job. Uh, one, of the, one of the pieces of advice I got, uh, I was actually my uh, uh, undergrad capstone professor, I believe his name was uh, Professor Jasso. Uh, one of the things that he recommended people doing was going and getting a job in the private sector uh, for a few years and then going out and starting a business. And the reason why he gave that advice was because uh, it, it's always a good thing to learn from companies that are doing things that are being successful and you can learn from them. And uh, if you really are that kind of entrepreneurial person who wants to do their own thing and build up their own, uh, their own business, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get kind of fed up uh, with the whole corporate lifestyle, even if it is a well-run organization. Uh, and, and that will really give you that passion you need to start up a business. And, Besides that, you get to see how uh, different businesses are ran. You get to learn new things. And uh, it, it just helps you get a more full picture of how work is done in the real world. Uh, so there's, there's that piece of advice. Uh, but the main piece of advice uh, we always give to uh, young entrepreneurs is start now, right? So uh, even if your idea is, seems huge, you could scale it back so that it is feasible for you at this time. Uh, maybe even if you wanted to uh, start a business where you provide uh, software as a service for Fortune 50 companies, what you could start out doing is you could start a blog, you could start a podcast, you could do interviews with people in those organizations that uh, would potentially be customers of you in the future, people who are decision makers. You can start blogging about uh, best practices for those companies. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do to start building it out and in a limited amount of time too. So you don't have to have 50 hours a week to, to do a blog and a podcast if you could spend five, six hours a week on it uh, over the course of a year. That's a pretty substantial amount of time. I mean, that's, that's what, seven, eight full-time weeks a year that you're spending on the side project of yours. Uh, so that's basically, you know, two months of full-time work on it uh, in just a year. And uh, it's amazing when you think about things like that, if you extrapolate it out, you know, if you just spend an hour a day on something, uh, you could build out, or you, you, at the end of the year, you've spent many, many weeks basically working on it. And uh, guess what? No matter no matter if you do a poor job or you do a great job at it, you're going to have built something uh, that is worth your while. So get started now. Get to work on it, uh, even if it is just as just building yourself up as an influencer. Uh, do that. Uh, so start now. Always be learning. Those are a couple of good pieces of, pieces of advice. Uh, I recently just did one of these kinds of interviews uh, with a guy named uh, Brian Roof. He's a, he's, a, he's a computer science and engineering student here at Cal State Fullerton. And about a year and a half ago, he started a business that provides affordable dispatching services for first responders and other organizations that need to manage uh, the movements of a lot of people. And he just started building the code out started working on the, the business uh, on the business side with us and uh, he created his service he already has a good number of customers uh, his his system 108 systems is the name of the company uh, was used to save uh, a few hundred lives uh, in one of the recent hurricanes from uh, last year and right now with 
uh, everything that's going on with the pandemic, uh, he's getting a lot more calls uh, inquiring about his service. Uh, so there's there's a ton of stuff that you can do with little to no money right now. You just have to have that tenacity uh, to go about and actually start building it. Uh, but yeah, uh, no time is better than the present to start something. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned previously, that we waste a lot of hours maybe on YouTube or Twitter and social media and Hulu, Netflix, when even if we spent those five hours a week, maybe we're binging 10, 15 hours a week. If we took even half of that and converted it to something productive and did that for a course of a year, like you said, that's two full months of progress towards something or a skill that you didn't have before. Yeah. And, uh, I get it. I mean, look, the, these are really crappy times right now. And so uh, that binging is kind of like a form of therapy for people, I think. Uh, so you know, if you are listening to this and you are the entrepreneur and you're, and you're, or you want to be that, that entrepreneur, uh, don't think that oh, because you slipped a little bit that, you know, you're a bad person or whatever. I mean, it's every hour that you can dedicate to something is, is a positive. So even if it's only an hour a week to start off with, uh, if you start seeing results, you know, that will start feeding on itself and you'll, you'll want to dedicate more and more time to it, especially as you see the, the kind of like the value proposition of that time spent on what it is that you're building. Uh, so yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta start. Uh, one of the things that I do, uh, here I'm in my home office, which is in the garage. I have one of my dogs sleeping next to me and, uh, I basically have, three screens up here. The, the, the top two are for work. And then I have a small little, little screen uh, below one of the monitors where I just have all my to-do lists. Uh, so I just like continuously remind myself that, Hey, you got a, you got a bunch of stuff to do. You better get to work. Uh, so whatever it is that you need to do, whatever it is that will make you be more productive, uh, start doing that stuff. And one of the great, or one of the quickest ways to be more productive is to do stuff that you actually find interesting. Uh, so one of the, like I was just mentioning, I, I read a lot and uh, partially because, you know, I just like reading, uh, but it's also because uh, a lot of the people that I admire that are successful, uh, they also read a lot. And so in an effort to more or less emulate what they're doing, uh, I kind of follow that best best practice that they've set out. And um, uh, yeah, honestly, I kind of forgot where I was going with that, but you know, read, <laughs> read a lot, uh, focus on uh, things that have value to you. Uh, if you have a passion for something, it'll, it'll help you get started out. Uh, but uh, just going back to what I was saying earlier, I mean, just, do stuff that has value to you and you're going to keep on doing more and more of it. And to end it off, is there one thing that maybe you would do differently if you were to, let's say, give advice back to your old uh, college student level? Uh, I think that uh, like if I had like a piece of advice I could give myself from like 15, 16 years ago, uh, it would probably be uh, take more risks. Right. So the reality is, and I, I know we talked about this a little bit already, probably like five, 10 minutes, but the amounts like the, the size of risks that you can take as somebody who's just starting out, uh, the downside is always pretty low. Right. So it's not like you're running Coca-Cola or Disney. And if you take a risk that could make your company $5 billion, uh, it could also lead to your company going bankrupt. Uh, when you're first starting out, you don't have that much to lose. And I mean, this is something that I think, you know, you intuitively know, I probably intuitively knew it back then as well. But uh, it was just in my mind that uh, if you take this risk, if you fail, that's, that's not good. Failure is bad. It's kind of just like something that we build into the, to our education system, kind of, kind of how we, we uh, get raised as well. Uh, so if anything, uh, I would go back and tell myself when I was 18 or more likely it'd be more effective probably when I was like 10 years old is, you know, take more risks, you know, try different things. So what if, uh, if that, 
business that you started the lemonade stand you start doesn't make you a lot of money at least you, you know you tried something and something good could have happened from it so thinking more in terms of uh the upside and less of less on the downside especially again early on when you don't have that much to lose uh the upside is really what you should be focusing on so doing those things while you still have the time and i think everybody does whether you're you know 21 years old and you're about ready to graduate or you're 50 years old and you're mid to late career um, do things that can have a tremendous upside uh, and you know, good things can happen. It's not, you know, a guarantee that anything good is going to happen again. I mean, a, a lot of startups fail. Uh, but if you want to be successful, if you want to have that kind of success, you're going to have to put in the time and take those risks that have that upside. So again, if, if I had that opportunity to go back and tell myself, I'm sure I had uh, people in my life who were telling me to, you know, take risks and stuff like that. Um, I would tell myself, early on yeah take 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 more risks uh especially if they have a tremendous amount of upside uh, because what, what do you got to lose right maybe some time maybe a few dollars here or there uh but the upside is you know you, you get a lot you, uh, at the very least you're going to get a good experience you're going to meet new people maybe you're going to make some money and uh, if everything goes great, maybe, maybe you build a business that can actually uh, sustain you for the rest of your life. Uh, maybe it can even be more than that. Maybe you can grow something that you thought was gonna be just a, a small knitting website and it becomes this venture-backed uh, uh, startup unicorn that is worth billions of dollars. Uh, so you, you never know until you actually go out there and try. So yeah, take more risks. I see. So uh, we're going to end it off there. Thank you so much, Travis. I really appreciate you taking your time to come on here and give fantastic pieces of advice. I know a lot of students would benefit from advice like this because it not only applies to someone who's trying to be an entrepreneur, but just in our day-to-day -day life, like we mentioned prior, there's a lot of risks that we take and a lot of decisions that we choose not to take because we're just worried about the downside. But then if you look at the cost benefit analysis of it, then in reality, there's so much more benefit that we don't see but it's there yeah absolutely hey and I, I really appreciate it this was i had a great time and uh i wish you all the best